for the paperwork for the engineering design process, one of the steps that tends to cause students some issues and confusion is selecting an approach and the decision matrix itself. So earlier in the design process, you're asked to come up with a variety of different ideas, and this is where you're actually going to evaluate those ideas against each other using the criteria and constraints or anything else that you can think of that might be a good evaluator for those ba basic ideas. As we can see in this document here, this group has already come up with some different ideas, and that's what, when we look at this, the decision matrix is referring to. What is our idea or interaction one, two, three, four, and five? And it wants us to list the criteria and constraints that we just determined above. So the easiest way to do this would be to just take those criteria constraints that you've already figured out and to paste them into the decision matrix. Once we have the decision matrix populated with the different criteria and constraints and maybe any other goals, that we can think of, we're ready to start evaluating. For the decision matrix, you're gonna be evaluating each idea on a scale of one to three, with one meaning that this is no good, two, yeah, it's okay, and three, it's definitely going to be good. So for this project, the students were looking at making a Rube Goldberg machine and with their different sketches, it was talking about individual components that they might include in their final design. One of their criteria was that it needed to last at least 15 seconds. So maybe interaction one, we look at that one and we realize that, yeah, that's definitely gonna give us a good four or five seconds towards that 15, we rank that as a three. Interaction two, we take a look at that one and we realize that that's only gonna take maybe a quarter of a second, give that one a one. Interaction three, we look at that one, that's definitely gonna help. This one might help and this one might help. You move on to the next criteria and constraint and you do the exact same thing. You're just ranking all of your different design ideas based off of whatever that individual criteria, constraint, or goal that you choose is. Once you have this list completely filled out, then you're just going to start adding up the totals. And down here at the bottom, this what the total score is for each idea. And this is where we can really see that based off of criteria and constraints that we've already identified, any other goals that we might have determined we wanted to evaluate our ideas on, we could take a look at how our ideas rank, how they score. If something scores really high, chances are that that's a really good idea and you should definitely look at using it. If something scores really low, chances are that it's probably not in your best interest to use that as a design idea and we should probably scrap it, get rid of it. If you're only looking for a single design idea out of the decision matrix, you're probably gonna take a look at what scored the highest. That's probably gonna be your best idea. That's what you should move forward with within the engineering design process. If you choose your highest and you realize, but it has a huge pitfall for that say, that there, then it's time to start evaluating, well, how could we solve that? And when you get down to the next steps where you're actually doing your final design and talking about how you're gonna build it, that's where you'd actually take a look at, well, this is how we're going to fix the shortcomings that we identified within the decision matrix.